Hey there, Sir Aims a lot. Les. What's up, buddy? Yeah, I had to tape him down because apparently he got to fighting something the other night and he fell over. And you see his shield? His shield got chipped. So he was diligent in his battle. He kept his chivalry. Sir Aims a lot, Les. Named by Dad Rat's Forge. Check his channel out if you haven't seen it. Cool stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, Double A coming back at you yet again. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. Let me take a seat and kind of explain this to y'all. Oh, I missed the chair. Now that I'm in the chair, <sighs> last time trying to cook off some calcium oxide or some calcium carbonate, turn it into calcium. Oxide. Last time trying to cook out pulverized limestone and try to turn it into calcium oxide, uh, I questioned. What happened? Only the bottom stuff got hot enough, but yet there was one time when I stirred it and it was all clumped together, which is usually what calcium oxide does. So, um, so why did partial of it work? Well, I pulled um, the bottom part of it out that I knew it was red hot. Why didn't the rest of it get red hot? Maybe because I stirred it. You see, the calcium pulverized limestone in here is uh, it's got a lot of air in it, and that air expands and it seems to insulate. Um, and not getting hot. So, I've got another crucible that I just happened to run across when I was cleaning up. It's amazing that you find stuff when you clean up. So this uh, crucible here is stainless, stainless steel. And the reason I don't use it is because I was using it in the uh, smelting some aluminum and uh, there was a pinhole in it and therefore it leaked aluminum. Um, I don't know if any of y'all melted aluminum but somehow aluminum will find a teeny tiniest little hole and escape out of it and you can clean it off all you want to. You'll never seem to find a hole for some reason. But anyhow, this should work fine for calcium uh, for the uh, the limestone pulverized limestone of the end. So I'm going to sit that in there. I'm going to cook it off for a while. Um, a while. I'm not going to touch it. I might look at it, but I'm not going to touch it. And uh, being it's stainless steel, it shouldn't deform because stainless steel's melting point is a lot higher than cast iron's melting point. So um, we're going we're gonna to give this a go. Samantha's good, by the way. She is very, very, very active, man. I mean, just the little, slightest little movement around here, and she's shooting across her little terrarium. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can get it in view here. Get my big, ugly head all the way. There it is. See that right there? Let me see here. Uh, zoom in. Can I zoom in? Zoom not supported for this mode. Oh, okay. Well, anyhow, see that terrarium, uh, that aquarium right there? Well, that was Stanley's old one, and it developed a leak. We woke up one morning, there's, you know, 10 gallons of water all over the floor. There's a crack in the bottom of it. There is a crack in the bottom of it? Okay. Which, so, we can't use it for um, water. water, but we can use it for sand or, or stuff like that, you know, um, being that she is a uh, more of a, I would say, the family type of uh, the forest. Forest? Is it forest? I think it's forest scorpion. Forest type scorpion. Because of the landscape she lives in, probably use some tree bark and stuff like that. She's brown and kind of, you know, we're not going to go over covers or anything like that. So we're going to put her in that. We're going to create a divider once the babies start getting big enough and they'll be separated. Because when the babies are out, man, they're, they're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And usually I'd have to buy a bunch of feeder crickets and just drop like, I don't know, 15, 20 feeder crickets in there because... They already start they, hunting. Uh, yeah, they, they start hunting from the get-go, and they're hungry. They're growing. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a, that, that's a project. Uh, but she's doing good. Um, I think she ate a grub worm earlier, I think. I have to I check. I she did. Um, but we'll throw some more food in there to make sure that she is fed. So uh, everything's good there. But we're going to go ahead and get this started. Actually, a couple of experiments, so... I'm going back with the same deal, but I've taken the flare off of it, and I am going to attempt to use the foundry as the flare. Um, don't know if it'll work, but I'm going to give it a try. What are the dangers in cooking off limestone? Let's talk about that. So, we got calcium carbonate, which I've already explained calcium carbonate is not really harmful for you. It will help you with your uh, indigestion. There is an open flame source. There is a uh, heat. 
and uh, there's carbon dioxide. So I guess you could get carbon dioxide poisoning, but you'd have to hold your face over that hole for, you know, a while and breathe all that in. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't go doing that unless you wanted to look like... Anybody remember powder? All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we have gotten this. Uh, it's been cooking off for quite some time now. And I have managed to get that stainless steel up to a high yellow heat. Um, you can tell me it's over 2,000 degrees, if my research is correct. Uh, somebody correct me if it's not. But it's been cooking for a couple hours now. Uh, last time I only cooked it for about an hour. This time I'm cooking it for two hours. Last time I disturbed I stirred it because I wanted to make sure all of it was getting heat. This time I didn't disturb it at all. And last time I dumped it out and uh, immediately went into trying to dump water on it. Separating it, letting it cool somewhat, and then dumping water on it. This time I will let it cool all the way down. Um, and we will see how that process goes. Might be a good idea to cut it off instead of on, huh? Now I'll let that uh, sit in there and, and cool slowly. And then I'll bring it out. I don't know if slow is the way to go. But, like I said, this is just a new test. Uh, I'll bring it in the shed. And I will dump it out here. In the meanwhile, wow, since we got the power cord out, let's see if we can find some bugs. Alright guys, I want you to take note. Everything on this ground is green. Everything is green. You see that, right? So I'm going to shut this light off. Look at that. So, certain plants release a red, red light waves when showing their black light. Like blood on it. Check this out. This grass grows glows blue and red, but more of a like a a blue under a black light. Isn't that cool? Look at that. Wow. Oh god, that's nasty. These things are even more hideous under a black light. I almost walked into that. I wonder how big the one was that I walked into. I'm creeping myself out. Hey, you gotta check me for spiders here in a minute. I found a few, but I couldn't get the camera on them quick enough. They they went and hid. So, but I have done running through enough spider webs. I am done for the night. Um, I don't know how many spiders I got on me. So, I'm more hunting tonight. I don't know if that's a queen. It's not a soldier. I don't know what kind of ant that is. That's a big sucker. I would like to know where it lives. What's that, man? Let it sit for a little bit. All right. Went to touch it with my finger and burnt the hell out of myself. So yeah, it is hotter than the devil's sock drawer right now. And gentlemen, we have success. We have success. So I just poured water on there and mixed it up the best I could. It went through the exothermic reaction as it is doing now. It is breaking down, and that hydrogen. And oxygen is taking the place of the carbon dioxide and we are making carbon a calcium hydroxide which is what we need as the building block for our bricks all right so we're gonna let this dry out and we're gonna let it fluff on up and uh, let's see if I've added too much water I may have added too much water it's not the white color it's supposed to be uh, so that might be because of contaminants because of the, uh, the scaling on the inside of my stainless steel crucible there so might we're gonna have to get a graphite crucible plain and simple recap everything today um work suck blah 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 blah, blah. we successfully converted calcium cal pulverized limestone into calcium oxide we got that exothermic reaction um so that is a degree that's a degree of success i may have crossed the threshold in adding water. You can add too much water which cools down the exothermic reaction. That's a problem. And the reason that's a problem is because the reason it is heating up is because hydrogen atoms are bonding to the calcium and oxygen atoms to create calcium hydroxide. There is a threshold there. So currently 
Okay, um, I made this little thing and squeezed it out through one of the nipples. And I have this, and it's still drying. So it potentially, maybe I didn't cross the threshold. If I come out here tomorrow after work, and this is not fluffy, it is little rocks that don't break apart easily, um, I have crossed the threshold. I have put just a little bit too much water in it. So the color isn't quite right either. So I think there is still an issue with um, contaminants. And I don't want any contaminants in it. So it's, uh, it is concerning for me. But, you know, this is definitely a step in the correct direction. Well, we definitely know now that we can convert pulverized limestone into um, calcium oxide. Here's the, the burner test with the... Um, I think it works a little bit better, you know, allowing the um, the foundry itself to be the uh, the the flare. Yeah, that concludes the night. So, love, peace, and pork grease, baby. Eat as much bacon as you can because it's just worth it. Talk to you later.